In the 1950s, architect Paul Rudolph was making waves in the design world. After graduating from Harvard, he moved to Sarasota, Florida, where he developed a distinct post-war style. He blended together the ideas of his predecessors, such as Frank Lloyd Wright, Mies van der Rohe, and Louis Sullivan, and married their design philosophies with the emerging brutalist style to create a new style altogether, known as the Sarasota School of Architecture. His innovative work became wildly popular as wealthy clients joined his ever-growing waitlist to have homes and other buildings designed by him. As he approached the height of his fame, he was hired by Yale University to design the Yale Art and Architecture Building before being named the chair of the Department of Architecture at Yale. By 1965, after designing in mostly the same way throughout his career, his fame began to dwindle as his ideas were no longer viewed as novel nor even current. He stepped down from his position at Yale and mostly abandoned the brutalist style, choosing to design all-glass skyscrapers. That being said, he still had a loyal following of students, design professionals, and clients. In 1971, Louis Michiel challenged Paul Rudolph to design for him his dream house. Louis had purchased a lot in Westport, Connecticut, and demanded of Rudolph to create his masterpiece. The site boasted a steep grade, so the house would have to be built into the hill, and no normal home layout for the time would do. It had to be open concept, but refined with a character of intrinsically good design, allowing the architecture to speak not only to the site, but for the building's elements to exist in poetic harmony. Paul spent nearly a year working on the plans, choosing materials, and thinking about what should be present in his masterpiece. The resulting structure boasted long, clean lines with large overhangs and ample patio space, blurring the lines between indoor and outdoor living. The facade was clad in a stucco-like material, with ground-up quartz mixed into it, allowing the house to glisten in the sunlight. He thought through every detail, even rethinking how a garage should connect to the home, and the separate experience its occupants would have from their guests when entering their home every day. Coming inside, natural light poured in through its many windows, while strategically placed architectural elements cast dynamic shadows, playing a trick on the eyes to make the space feel larger than it was. The living room, with its many voidal spaces, created an environment for the fireplace wall to appear monolithic against a glass curtain wall. And up a few steps, the dining room, with its many built-ins, was planned within a corner of two walls, creating a space within a space as an envelope of walls delicately restrained the function of the room. The office was planned with long sight lines to look over the house, peering through bookcases and under walls, giving it a sense of separation while still feeling much larger than the floor space provided. In the Michaels' later years, they attempted to sell the house, placing it on the market in 2005. But after an entire year of sitting on the market, no buyers could be found. At this time, all around the neighborhood, buildings were being demolished to make way for new construction. In fact, this was happening at such a rate that the local newspaper had a column titled, Teardown of the Day. Finally, the home found a buyer and plans for demolition were filed. The National Trust for Historic Preservation labeled the property as having a great significance and even the state's attorney general attempted to intervene. But after the buyer offered to pay more than $3.2 million to the McKeels, they decided to let the house go. In 2007, Paul Rudolph's masterpiece was torn down and replaced by an insignificant McMansion. Thankfully, we still have just the small handful of photos to remember what was possibly the masterpiece of architect Paul Rudolph. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below in the comment section. And while you're there, Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.